I am a computer science engineer. I understand the world in a binary way. You know, it's either a zero or a one, right? I have to have zeros. I have to have ones to make my computer work. I have to have both of them in order for the computer to function the way I want it to function. And many a times we believe that it is insignificant for a zero. You know, it doesn't matter. But in my sense, in my world, as a computer science engineer, zero is equal to one. Zero matters as much as one does. So in the same way, any one of us, at times, you know, we'll be feeling insignificant, we feel low, we believe at times that, you know, what can I do? How can I contribute? I'm so small, I'm so tiny, I'm so insignificant. What can I do? But that's not the case. All of us, we could be a zero, we could be a one. I believe all of us matter. And all of us need to take certain actions to matter more. And I believe, as a computer science engineer, since the world functions on zero sign one, and zero matters as much as one does, in this whole world, every single person matters and everything matters. And drawing inspiration from the Indian independence movement, if you can just look back what we have achieved in this country. There was a small, tiny action triggered by the Britishers. They imposed a salt tax on us, right? And that salt tax united the whole of the nation. Earlier it was not so. India was just a concept. It was just a different, different states, many fiefdoms, many serfdoms, many small, tiny kingdoms. But that small action of Britishers triggered the unity in the nation. And under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi ji, all of us united. We fought, and this was in 1930, the Salt March. And within 17 years, India got independence. The kind of trigger the Salt Tax acted as, it gave us freedom, it gave us independence. I mean, we could be looking up at a leader, but I look at it in the sense that when Mahatma Gandhi ji walked there, picked up the salt and held his hand high, that matters to me more than anything, and that mattered to Indians at that point of time. And that is why today I believe we are free. I mean, a small action, a small gesture taken up matters a lot. And drawing further, India is a place for various movements that we've seen. And I'm very proud to mention this next one. This is a movement led by women and inspired eco-friendly people across the world. This is a Chipko movement I'm talking about. This was in 1970s when commercial logging was allowed in India and contractors were given free ride. They could go fell the whole of the forest and nobody could do anything about it. But these women from the Rayleigh village in Uttarakhand, they had faced severe problems of devastating floods, mudslides, not having their uh, proper firewood to be collected. Their livelihoods were taken for a toll. They were resisting it and they had resisted with all their might. And this was, a, this was one particular day when the contractors came to the Rayleigh village all the men of the village were lured to some other area by trip by the contractor. Just the women of the village were there. Women saw that these contractors came in. They went there. They stood near the trees. They tried to stop, talk them out of this. But the lumbermen were not, li not uh, listening to them. They were insisting on cutting the trees. So instantly, these women emotionally take up a small action. All of them just go and hug the trees. They say, you know, if you want to fell the tree, no problem. We'll just be hugging the ground. Do whatever you want to do. And trust me, these women held ground for four days. And the government of the day had to come down and take back the contract. And the commercial logging, logging on that area was cancelled. And this led to many, many environmental movements across India. And not only in, in India, across the world, this women's movement is even today referred to as eco-feminism movement. And this is referred as a case study. Wonderful research has been done in it. I mean, just think about it. Instantly, emotionally, that one thought that came to this woman's head that led into such a brilliant movement and it saved so many forests and it inspired so many other people. And likewise, we're very lucky Indians. We have a lot of examples to draw from. When I think about uh, Ramayana, this ancient scripture of ours, which is greatly revered, Lord Rama's wife gets kidnapped by this ten-headed demon king. He, he put Sita in an island away from mainland of India 
So Lord Rama now has to build a bridge from mainland India to the island, right? So he has the support of these great Vanara kings, the monkey kings, and all of them are excited. All of them start building the setu or the bridge. Now monkeys are very powerful, very strong. These Vanaras, they are carrying these heavy boulders, huge stones, they are building a bridge. Now touched by the plight of Lord Sri Rama, his struggle for Sita, one tiny brown squirrel wants to help. So she comes in. She is rushing up and down the mountains, taking small tiny pebbles to the shores. And the monkeys laugh at her. They mock her. What are you doing? Why are you getting in the way? Get off. You know, they mock her, but she never goes away. She constantly is going up and down, bringing the pebbles and putting them. Now, it's only in the due course of time, in a matter of time, that monkeys realize for all these big boulders and huge stones to stay in place, the binding pebbles are necessary. And they needed those pebbles for the bridge to stay put. And Lord, Lord Rama, all of us know, blesses the squirrel and till day, the, the squirrel has, you know, those three beautiful uh, stripes on her back. Well, it is a myth or it is a belief or whatever. But I draw great inspiration from the story. You know, we matter, however small we could be. In the ecosystem, in the larger scheme of things, every positive thought, every brilliant idea, every tiny little action, it somewhere, somehow, brilliantly fits in the scheme of things. And while thinking about these things, in the most recent times, in the backdrop of, uh, backdrop of great deal of cultural discrimination and uh, developmental apathy mooted to the Telangana region uh, in 2001, Telangana people have launched an agitation. And of course, there was mainstream political agitation supported by intellectual students. But then women of Telangana slowly made their way into this moment. Very softly, but surely, women carried badkama on their heads. And when a woman carrying a badkama is seen, she doesn't have to resort to sloganeering. She doesn't have to do anything. It is a strong cultural symbol it sends a great message that yes, we want a separate state. And women did that very powerfully. What did they do? They played, they sang, they laughed, they smiled, they carried a badkama on their head. And women said smaller goals. They said, let this festival be identified as a state festival. And even at the current establishment, United Andhra Pradesh, they had to give a state festival status to badkama. And these are small victories that came in the way. And then of course the state was eventually achieved in 2014. But then women played a greater role. And women always played a greater role in various uh, uh, wars, uh, many, many moments across the world. Now, when for me personally, if I have to draw some inspiration from Telangana movement and adopt them in solving the problems of the world, how do I do it? And why do I say I can solve the problems of the world? You know what happens? It's so funny. Often, there are complex questions, very serious, huge questions. But the answers are very simple. Complex questions don't have to have complex answers. Complex questions can have simple problems. Now, what are the, what are the huge problems faced by the world? Inequality, poverty, climate change. Now, climate change is a huge issue. But how can I, as an individual, do something about it? Can't I do anything about it? I can stop a free from being felled. I can go plant a sampling. I can switch off my light. I can only use my AC when needed. I can do something in my own space. I don't have to be a tall leader. I don't have to be a Bill Gates to donate billions of dollars for research. I can do my own bit. What do I do to remove inequalities in the world? I don't have to go to Africa, try to feed poor people there and have a photograph in the paper. I can just start by helping my own helper. I can eradicate poverty by donating if I have more than what I need. I can start doing things like how the squirrel did, like how the women in the Chipko movement did, like how everybody else in the world where people's movement mattered, where minority voices mattered, when small positive actions mattered. Similarly, we can do and solve these various issues in the world. And I sincerely believe there are very, very many things the world can become a better place by going ahead and doing some small action. And just imagine this, if you are sitting in Varnas, or maybe you are in Jerusalem, or maybe you are in Makkah, 
Why are these places sacred? Are they sacred by themselves? I believe what you have in your heart makes them sacred. If you are happy, you see a happy picture, world around you looks rosy. If you are not happy, world looks very sad. If your heart is filled with hatred, you will not like what other people are saying. If your heart is filled with love, no matter what anybody says, it's all music all around your ears. So I believe universe doesn't make me. I make the universe. And when I say I, it is each one of us. All of us, we make the universe. And I believe with a positive action, however tiny it could be, all of us can bring about change. All of us can do our way and make this world a beautiful